Hi guys and welcome to my channel. This video is going to be part 2 of my previous video on solo cooking using induction cookers. In the previous video, I explained the benefits of induction cookers, that they are more efficient than gas, have precision control, which is much better than gas, there are no harmful flames or gases, and it doesn't heat the kitchen up. And I showed that it could be run on solar power using an inverter. However, in that video, I couldn't cook a meal and show you guys because I had a small battery setup. And I couldn't go above 500 watts because my inverter was not powerful enough. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you my new big battery setup. I'll discuss on how I combine lithium and lead acid batteries to get an efficient hybrid battery setup. And at the end, I'll cook a small meal and show you guys what is possible with this small solar power system. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Okay, so as you can see, I have connected this deep cycle lead acid battery. The wires are going up in parallel to my lithium ion phosphate battery setup and supercapacitor bank. All these wires are connected here at my inverter. This is possible because the charging voltage for both battery setups is the same, 14.4 volts. For charging, I'm using this buck converter as a good voltage regulator for my lithium ion batteries. A fully charged lithium ion phosphate battery is 13.2 volts, which is also close to the float charge value of the lead acid battery. After 80% depth of discharge, lithium ion phosphate batteries reach a voltage of 12.8 volts, which is still the full charge value of the lead acid battery. So in this hybrid battery setup, I'm able to use the lithium ion phosphate battery for most of my daily cycling and use the lead acid battery once the lithium ion phosphate battery reaches 20%. This prolongs the life of both batteries since lithium ion phosphate batteries get the best cycle life if they are not discharged significantly below 20%. And the lead acid batteries get more life as it is cycled less often. So the major benefit I get is that I can get a good system for a low cost. Okay, so now we are going to test this induction cooker on this solar power setup. Let's turn the camera down like this. Okay. On the inverter. Let's let that come on. We'll place the pan here. Let's let this come on. Right, so as you can see, it's this 2000 watt inverter is able to handle a load of 1300 watts. But for today's testing, I'm going to test at 1000 watts. So now we'll test the inverter at 1000 watts. Right. Let's put the on. Let the pan heat up. And for the first test, I'm going to cook an egg.
thousand watts is enough to cook most of our meals. So, as you can see, this is in the afternoon, and direct solar power is also coming in. And my panel is actually 150 watts. So 150 watts coming through the sun power, solar power, but I'm able to use 1000 watts of this induction cooker. The reason is all that energy is stored in the battery and this inverter is able to handle that load. Okay. Next, we are going to use a pressure cooker and cook some chickpeas. Let's off this. Okay. Right. Now, I'm going to try this pressure cooker. I'm going to cook and show you some chickpeas and see how that fares. So now we're going to cook using solar power and an induction cooker using a pressure cooker. I'll put a timer as well. Yes, as you can see, we are now nine minutes into our experiment and it's still functioning at 1000 watts. Let's see our solar power, solar panel. Solar panel is pulling in 8.94 amps and the battery has struck to around 12 volts but still it's functioning let's see how long which how long we can go as you can see 1000 watts is not enough for the pressure cooker to let out plenty of steam but it's we have reached a certain good pressure level ah. it finally worked I was not expecting that. So this proves the point. At 1000 watts, we are 14 minutes into the uh, experiment and it just let out steam. We can still go a bit more further but I don't want to proceed. Okay. releasing the steam to open it up. It's hot. Okay. Now let's see how our chickpeas have come out. That is lovely. Well done. Oh, they are very hot. Nicely cooked chickpeas. So guys, I hope you liked this video. Please hit the like button and share it among your friends. Also, if you have any questions regarding what I did today, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Also, thanks for watching. Bye!